Let's go on a quick poker walk here. Threw my flip flop at a bug earlier. So, had to grab that. I guess I'll go this way today. Um, somebody posted a question about a tournament spot to me recently. And I'll put the comments somewhere around here. Uh, if you want to, you can pause and read it. Um, but basically the gist of the comment was a tournament spot where the person got it all in with pocket kings against two other players. Um, they ended up losing. I I'm sure they ended up losing. But the gist of the question was basically that the player didn't realize that they had... They didn't realize that they didn't have as much equity as they were expecting. I'm just trying to not get run over here. The player was basically worried about um, getting it in with just 53% equity or what have you uh, three-handed. So basically the opportunity to triple up or almost triple up um, and have 53% equity. So the question is basically, can he pass up on that spot? Or is that actually a good spot? I think what I think one of the things that this drives at is basically the difference between your equity, so your chance of actually winning the hand, and your EV, which is the amount you should expect to make on average by making a certain play. These are different concepts, and I think people kind of mistake them pretty often. The reason why it's important to understand the difference is because you could get into a spot where your head's up, let's say you have 70% equity, and uh, you rate to win, you know, whatever, $10 by taking that play, or whatever, 1,000 chips, doesn't matter. The number doesn't matter. Uh, but then, you could be in a situation where you're all in against two players and you have, I don't know, let's say 50% chance to win the hand, uh, but you actually rate to win more money by taking that line and getting in against multiple people. The difference is important because your equity actually drops in between the first situation and the second situation. Uh, because you're up against multiple people, their ranges combined have more equity against you, but you could still make more money on average by by actually being up against two people. Uh, the same is true for the all-in situation that they presented with Pocket Kings. Uh, they are a favorite against each individual range, and even though their equity technically dropped when they get it in against two people, there's way more chips in the middle when there's a third person and they rate to make more money by getting in it against both players. Now I did reply to the person who commented. So I did reply to the comment on the actual video and kind of another comment from the same person came in as a reply and it kind of became clear to me that the person wasn't just worried that the play was a losing play um, even though even though they said something to the effect of I wanted to fold kings after the fact because I figured out that I only had 53% equity or what have you it wasn't so much that they necessarily thought it was a losing play like it it was negative chip EV but rather they were worried about losing too often so so they they're basically saying i care more about my equity than my ev in this spot is that right um and the short answer is no the short answer is no you should always pretty much regardless of tournament or cash care only about the ev of a given play uh, not the equity the tough thing is in a tournament, you have something called tournament life. You can't just rebuy, and this tends to give people kind of a warped uh, feeling about what matters and how valuable their tournament life actually is. So in general, it's a good rule of thumb that unless you are very close to the bubble or on a pay jump, particularly like on a final table pay jump uh, in the top you know, five spots or something like that, 
in general, barring those situations, you always want to take the line that's going to give you the highest expected value, regardless of how likely you are to be out of the tournament, because it's so much more important in the vast majority of tournaments to generate a stack that allows you to survive and allows you to... There's a truck going by. I'm hoping this doesn't take too long. I think he's wrapping up. <laughs> Although every time I think that, he keeps moving. The idea is that the value you make by getting it in and losing sometimes is outweighed by the chips that you can add to your stack. Um, there are exceptions. I don't want to talk about bubble play and ICM right now, but most of the time you want to do whatever's going to win you the most chips on average in the long run now that being said uh there are other scenarios that could affect this when i started to think about this more i realized that the person was kind of really asking about sacrificing expected value to actually curb variance because what they said next was basically i've been trying a strategy where i get it in less uh, and it's been working for me. I've been cashing more, although I'm playing a short stack a lot. And so their, their question really comes down to, can I fold more in these spots where I know I'm ahead in order to preserve my stack because I might lose like 30 to 50% of the time. Now, there are spots where you can pass up on an all-in situation so that you can maintain your stack. Most of the times, this will not be spots where you have a big edge like with Pocket Kings. In fact, you should probably never be folding Pocket Kings pre-flop in most live tournaments. There are situations where you can, I don't want to open that can of worms, but there shouldn't really be that many. The best way to kind of describe the kind of situation this is is just to give an example of a table dynamic. So let's say you're on a table where you are by far the best player and your opponents for the most part are folding pre-flop or on the flop and you have a stack where let's just say it's enough to where you're not gonna be forced all in because of like push fold dynamics anytime soon. Like you, let's say you have 50 big blinds, 40 big blinds and you are in a situation where you can be raising and three betting pre-flop, taking it down on the flop or pre very often. And there's a spot where somebody open jams, uh, I don't know, 15 big blinds or, tw you know, let's say 20, they, sh they jam 25 big blinds all in pre and you have, let's say 35 big blinds. So, if you call and lose, you would be down to, you know, um, uh, 10 big blinds. Let's say you'd be down to 10 big blinds. Where you would actually be in kind of push fold mode. It's conceivable that you could fold a lot of hands here that you, on any other table, would be very quickly getting it in with. Such hands like pocket nines or tens hands like ace jack ace queen where if that you know if you like even if you know this person is not super wide you'd still have to get it in but on this table even if he's pretty wide you would maybe consider folding um now that's an extreme example and there's not very many tables like that these days where i just feel like my edge is that big that I can just kind of run the table over. And if that's the case, I would say there's a really, really good chance that if I do lose this hand and I get down to 10 big blinds, I'm just gonna be able to get a lot of shoves through and they're gonna fold too much anyway. So it's kind of, it's hard to even generate a situation where you would want to be folding in this, these kinds of spots with good hands where you rate to win chips on average. But you can make theoretical examples where, you know, you can calculate it out and your EV of calling it off is like 
I don't know, like plus 0 0.01 big blinds or something like that. Some some pretty small, some pretty small number. And the risk that you take by getting it in is large compared to that amount that you would gain. There are situations you could manufacture that look like that, uh, but they're not very common. You shouldn't be really looking for them. And even if you miss a spot like that where it might be okay, it's not really a mistake either. Please don't go folding kings just because two players are already all in. Uh, there's really, there's really not enough situations where that's justified to even really talk about frequently. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, I hope you guys are liking seeing all the green out here. And let me know what you guys think about this new format. I know going on these poker walks is a little bit different than uh, just a normal vlog. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you like it, let me know what other things you like me to talk about. Because I do think I'm going to kind of try to keep this going. And see what else we can talk about uh, that being said i really appreciate it if you guys would like and subscribe if you haven't already if you are subscribed consider signing up for notifications uh, all that means is you'll uh, be notified in youtube when i put a new video up uh, it just helps you not miss anything you can do that by clicking the little bell icon next to the subscribe button if you've already clicked it. And uh, that'll mean we're always in touch. So I guess I will see you guys in the next video.